Good afternoon, folks. I'm Dan. Quick little shop update for you. Probably very little editing. Probably just me rambling a little bit, but this is what's going on in the shop. Um, seems like I'm kind of all over the place on this airplane project right now, and it's kind of intentional. I don't really like it, but it's because the weather's changing very quickly, and I'm not going to have access to the to the airplane factory itself. Probably uh, where we're standing right now is going to be filled with. Uh, fuselage and wings so that will very very much limit uh, my ability to get in here and actually do anything productive in this portion of the shop so I'm kind of staging things so that I've got other stuff going on that I can do um, over the winter you'll see fuel tank progress will do quite a bit of engine stuff I think and uh, some of the other little things going on that I can do so that I don't just stall out on this project so things continue to, to proceed forward um, I see the weather changing very quickly around here today. It's windy as can be and it's starting to cool off. So I pulled the, well, I've got the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator sitting back there against that wall. Back there and the rudder's sitting down here. And it's because the wind's picked up enough that the airplane sitting out there has decided that it kind of wants to fly a little bit. So by taking those off, it's, it's a little bit more stable and not wanting to move around as much in the wind. So we've got that done. Um, this morning I tacked my fuel tanks together, the, the edges of them, all four of them. You've already seen the video probably, or I've already put out the video on uh, forming the, the stiffener ribs in the fuel tank. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it up here, up here someplace. So um, you can go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, I fusion welded those just to tack them in place. Um, that's one of the progress or one of the projects I can work on when I don't have access here. I got my little, little welding table all cleared off and I can go ahead and I can finish the tank and get them installed and, and start welding up those fuel tanks. So they're kind of there out of the way. I see I got a little bit of staining on a couple of them. It's nothing that that's affects the functionality of them. It's just surface staining on there. So they'll get cleaned up of course and, and once everything's welded up I will probably prime those tanks and get them together. Today I laid out the uh, pattern for the door and this is very similar to the the way Xena says to lay out your patterns to do your doors I'm going to do a bubble door for them and this will develop as it goes on I've got a a idea for the springs to, to hold the door open and closed that everybody has problems with either cracking out their doors or uh, slamming shut on you or things like that I've got an idea that I think may work for that that might be a pretty good idea and latch system I'm going to make a little bit of a modification this is going to be the basic basic door here um, and they'll be well they'll be probably a inch flat offset on the bottom where it hinges on the top so we can connect the hinge there and before we start the bubble door there this pattern will probably be approximately at least an inch wider all the way around so it can be trimmed to to fit the opening and have overlap over the over the fuselage and everything so it lays down the way it's supposed to be and then there will probably be three quarters to an inch of flat surface before the bubble starts itself down in there um, to give clearance for a framework that I plan on putting on there. Uh, this area where the latch handle goes, door handle goes, will have basically the same pattern that Zenith uses where you've got your bubble and then you've got a, a flat section on the bottom. So that will develop as time goes on. Um, what else is happening? I'm going to try and get the uh, try and get the motor mount at least laid out and, and um, the basic design of that done before the weather really gets bad so I can still fit that to the to the uh, front of the fuselage and have that worked on um, engines I've got one crank ready to be sent off the nitride and I'm going to double check dimensions on it one more time before I before I ship it off to have it nitrided but it looks pretty good um, the engine that I'm using as a mock-up on the firewall is, I believe, the case I'm going to use. Those are the heads that I will use. Um, I think I've got, I think I've only got one more set of heads, although I may have two, and the, the other set is 140 horsepower heads, so I'm not going to use them. They're the high-performance heads, and they're not what we want for a flight engine. These heads look to be a good set of heads. Uh, I see a couple of issues with them, but I don't think it's anything that's going to be a problem. 
Um, the right head looks like at one point in its life it had some, some short spark plugs in it, so the last thread or two down in the combustion chamber area show a little bit of erosion there where I think it was, I think it was run with short plugs in it probably, but the threads look good in it all in all, so I don't think there's an issue there. Um, the left head, I see one, the, the center spark plug has uh, had a time cert put in it. I don't believe it's a, a helicoil. I believe it's been time certed in there from the looks of it. Um, and other than that, I think the heads are in pretty good shape. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to set up for intake manifolds on them, if I'm going to put a weld on manifold on, or if I'm going to put a bolt on style um, intake manifold on them like Mark Lang Langford did on his early, uh, early Corvair engines. Uh, his design worked, I think, really well. Um, the weld on intake seemed to have been the standard here in recent years. The thing I don't like about the weld on intake manifolds is you've restricted your head to either a left side of the engine head or a right head, right hand side head of the engine. Um, in a perfect world it shouldn't be an issue, but if you have to change heads or need an extra head or have to redo something if you've got uh, weld on intakes that are already welded on there why you can only you've, you've either got a head that goes on the left hand side of the engine or the right hand side of the engine it's not a, a universal or a bolt on design where you just bolt on your your intake manifolds why then it could be a left or right hand side and you just switch your switch your uh, intakes themselves so I think that adds a little more versatility as time goes on other than that, we've just got parts laid out. We I haven't done anything else with flapperons or slats or any of that. Th any of that, just because I haven't felt like it. I guess haven't worried about getting materials. Um, I'm kind of involved in the gas collator project right now, so I'm going to see how far I can get get with that and um, get those finished up, and then we'll move on to something else. So. I hope you found this a little bit useful. If you like these videos, why consider subscribing. Uh, give me a thumbs up and hit that bell notification so you know when I put out a new, new video. And stay tuned, there's more to come. Thanks for taking the time to watch.